Hey guys, we're still on lesson 2.4 and we're going to look at, talk about what inequalities are. So write and solve inequalities. So the first thing is you need to know what is an inequality. Well, it's similar to an equation, except instead of an equal sign, you're going to have an inequality sign. So here's some examples of your inequality signs. Greater than, so if you have a greater than symbol, um, it's going to be opened up to your left. If you have a less than symbol, the larger end or it's opened up to your right. And then you have greater than or equal to. If you see the line underneath it, that means greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Now, when we get to graphing these, these are important to know that um, greater than and less than, when we graph, these will have an open circle. Okay, so that means the point is not included in the answer. So when we have a number line, these will have an open circle. The greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, these will be solid circles. These will be included in the solution. So again, when we start graphing, be aware that greater and less than have open circles, uh, greater than or equal to and less than and equal to have less than. All right, so you can see the properties down here. Addition and subtraction work very much the same. Multiplication and division, the only difference you need to note is if you have multiplication or division, it's a little different as the inequality will switch directions only if it's negative. All right, so this is only on multiplication or division. So make note, if you multiply or divide by an inequality, the inequality sign will change directions. All right, let's look at a couple examples. All right, so the first example we're going to look at, 3x plus 2 greater than or equal to 1 half x plus 5. So just like with equations, we have parentheses, so we're going to evaluate that first. Let's start by just separating our inequality. Just like an equation, it has two sides to the inequality, and we're going to do the same thing on both sides. So the first thing is we're not changing anything here. We're going to bring this straight down. And on this side, we're not changing anything, but we are going to distribute, which means we're going to multiply this, but we're not adding or taking anything away yet. So 1 half times 5, you multiply the numerator, so you get 5, and that would be over 1, so 1 times 2 is 2. So 1 half times 5 is 5 halves, which is 2 and a half, which makes sense. All right, now we need to get our um, numbers on the same side and our variables on the same side. So it doesn't matter which you do first. Let's go ahead and subtract 1 half x from both sides. So I'm going to have 3x, which I need to make over 2. So if I multiply top and bottom by 2, that's 6 halves x. 6 halves is the same thing as 3. And then minus 1 half x. And then I still have that plus 2 here. And then I still have this cancels, and I have my 5 halves to bring down. All right, and at any time, if you need to pause the video to catch up, please do so. I do go through these kind of quickly just so I can get it in the 15-minute free video that we have. All right, so we got 6 halves x minus 1 half, which is 5 halves x. They're on the same side, so we just combine like terms here. And then I have plus 2, so I need to subtract 2. I'm going to subtract 2. Well, 2 is 2 over 1. I need a denominator of 2. So just multiply that by 2, and you get 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is just 2 rewritten. Okay? So this will cancel. And we have 5 halves minus 4 halves. 5 minus 4, 1 half. All right, now we have 5 halves x greater than or equal to 1 half. We need to multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, the reciprocal is just 5 halves 
upside down. So we're just going to take the reciprocal of both. That means 10 over 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. Those cancel or equals a 1. And then I have a positive number, so I don't change my inequality sign. And here I just multiply straight across. So I've got 2 over 10. And we can change that, or we can reduce that. 2 over 10 can be reduced to 1 over 5. So this is our inequality. And we need to graph this on a number line. So we always show this. This means everything greater than or equal to 1 fifth, which is more than one number. So we represent that by putting it on a number line. All right, since it's very close to zero, I'm going to put zero on here. We know everything to the left is negative. We're going to put one, two, etc. All right, so one fifth of the way, one fifth of the way to five is one. Let's divide this up here. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so one fifth would be around here. It is greater than or equal to, which means that point is included, and x is all points greater than that or equal to that. So graphed on a number line, it would look something like that. Now you don't have to have every number on your number line, but it does have to be detailed enough to know where this answer is going to be. And you always need to have zero on your number line because zero kind of divides the positive and the negative numbers. So it's a good indication of where you are on the number line. All right, let's look at another example. All right, example two. All right, so I'm going to have negative 4x. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to distribute the 3 fourths. Again, I'm going to multiply by the numerator and keep the denominator. So 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3x. And then 3 fourths times negative 12. 3 fourths times negative 12. Again, we can multiply by the numerator. 3 times negative 12 is negative 36. And 36 divided by 4 is 9. So we can write this as negative 9. All right, and if you need to go back and review, review multiplying fractions, you probably would not be a bad idea. All right, so you got negative 4x plus 3x is negative x. These are on the same side of the inequality, so you just combine like terms. And then bring down the negative 9. And then I'm going to add 9. Remember, when we add or subtract, nothing changes, meaning our inequality stays the same. So 3 plus 9 is 12. And now I'm dividing. When I divide by a negative, I'm dividing by a negative, my sign will switch directions. So I'm going to have this change directions. Negative divided by negative is positive, And I get negative 12 here. All right, same kind of thing. I do need to graph my solution. So my inequality is x less than or equal to negative 12. Okay, and to show that on a graph, again, I'm going to have 0. Let's put 0 here. And let's say we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You can see this time I went by a scale of 2. And, um, and then I need a solid circle again at 12. Less than or equal to means our x's are all numbers less than, which means numbers get smaller, going to the left of this. And that's how we would graph that. All right, moving on to the next example. All right, the next example, let's go ahead and distribute. So I'm going to leave my inequality sign here. 
I'm going to distribute the 2, so I've got 2 times 1 and 2 times 3x. Now I have to distribute the negative, which is a negative 1, and a positive 3x. And then I'm going to combine all like terms. So I've got 19, I've got 2 and negative 1. 2 minus 1, they're on the same side, so I'm combining like terms. Here I've got 6x and 3x. Again, they're on the same side, so I just combined them, and it becomes 9x. I'm going to subtract 1. 19 minus 1 is 18. And then I'm solving for x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2. All right, so I can leave it like this, or if I want to put my variable on this side, this says 2 is greater than x, or if you read it from this side, x is less than 2. So if you switch the side of the variable, like if your variable goes from the right side to the left side, you have to change the inequality to make that represent that change. You can't just move it and keep the inequality the same. All right, so our answer to this one is going to be x is less than 2, so I've got an open circle at 2, and I need to mark everything less than, all of these numbers are less than 2. So that would represent the inequality. All right, let's look at one more example. All right, this last example here, okay, we're going to draw the line. The inequality is way over here this time. So we're going to start with distributive property again. So we've got 2 times 1, 2 times negative 3, and then we've got 3 times r, and 3 times 2. So you have to do distributive property twice because you have two sets of parentheses there. Now again, this is our inequality. Since all of this is on the same side, you can combine any like terms. So we've got 2 and 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. And we have negative 6r plus 3r. That becomes negative 3r. All right, we're going to subtract 8. That's a positive 8, so we subtract 8 from both sides negative 3r. Again, the inequality does not change except for multiplication and division, not for subtraction or addition. All right, so 8 plus 5 is 13. And then we divide both sides by negative 3. Wait a minute. I knew something was wrong here. Okay trying to talk and write at the same time. All right, I've got a positive 5 minus 8. 5 minus 8 would be negative 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. Okay, when I divide by a negative, I change my inequality. Negative divided by negative becomes positive. So r is less than 1 is my inequality. If I want to graph that, less than 1 would be an open circle at 1. Everything less than 1 is to the left of 1. All right, so again, inequalities are very similar to equations. The only difference is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to change the inequality sign. If you have any questions, let me know.